Hi, Marcus Conti. I'm going to take a deep dive today into the meaning of words, a very abstract dive into the meaning of political reform and, and, and what is oligarchy and monopoly and what, what do these things mean? Do we, do we actually live in a, in a democracy anymore? Do we live in, a, in an oligarchy? What the hell is going on? Uh, so check this shit out, man. So, um, so do we need a political reform? I, I mean, I know everybody's happy, right? Well, are we happy? What do Brexit, what do yellow vests, what do MAGA, the MAGA hats, make America great again, and, and, and the, the, the struggle for independence in Venezuela? What is the common thread? What do we all have in common, right? Throughout Europe, Europe's on fire, demanding the ousting of the oligarchy, right? Get rid of them, right? This is not democracy. This is not. This is capitalism run amok, right? That's what. That's what we're, we're, we're basically, in 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 lockstep with. Although we haven't identified it yet, because everybody has their own fucking opinion, right? But, nonetheless, when we say when America says we're going to eliminate the deep state, what we're really talking about is li- eliminating, the the power structure, the oligarchy, the thing that the corporations and the ruling class that. Keep it all in play. So let's let's start with a let's start with a little uh, uh, analogy here. Let's start with a surf analogy. How many guys you ever surfed before? Okay, I love surfing. So enjoy that. Right? So, mm, ah, imagine you are surfing and catch a big wave. You drop into the wave and take your ride. At that very moment, you own the wave. You and the wave are one. At some point, natural elements kick in. The wave closes out, and it returns its energy to the sea. The wave is no more, but you live to ride another wave. But instead of returning to the lineup to catch the next wave, you order Mother Nature and all the people on Earth to resurrect the same wave you once rode. You refuse to exit the water or move to the next wave or let others take a wave. You insert yourself at the break so that no other wave may be enjoyed until your wave is resurrected. You demand with every ounce of your being that the entire efforts of the sea should converge to prop up your wave once again. You insist that it is your right to ride your wave, even though the wave has returned its energy to the sea. You legitimately caught that wave, and therefore you own rights to the wave, and any similar acting wave thereafter. You argue that it is your right as a free man to keep that wave forever. You ignore natural balance and pretend you are still on top of the wave when in fact you've already been pushed ashore. You argue that others in the lineup awaiting a wave have no right whatsoever to catch a wave of their own until your wave is addressed. You threaten to sue for interfering with your wave. Fucking surfing, right? It's all in there, right? It's, it's like trying to make the it's trying to make what what isn't happen, right? It's it's you know, you see the wave, it swells. Right, you get your ride. Look at that guy. He's got his ride. Right, he's getting his ride, and then the wave is no more. Right, the wave is over. Right, and then you you paddle back out, and you get another wave. Right, but but with monopoly, the the analogy here is obviously oligarchy. It's obviously monopoly. It's it's a situation where where corporations have have bought each other. Right, monopoly with his. Let me. I'm going to read a little something, and I'll I'll try to explain it. I wrote it all down today, so that uh, I I don't want to miss it out. I don't want to miss out. But let's say, like, what is monopoly? Let's ask Google and find out. Huh? Hey Google, what is the military-industrial complex? According to Wikipedia, the military-industrial complex is an informal alliance between a nation's military and the defense industry that supplies it, seen together as a vested interest which influences public policy. See the conflict of interest where the military and the government are in lockstep, right? The military-industrial complex, the people who profit from, from military, and the government, and they just they co-sign each other's nonsense. See, it's money in politics, always. That is the, the essence of the problem. We'll get to that.
We'll get to that in a second. Hey, Google, what is the pharmaceutical industrial complex? According to Wikipedia, the medical industrial complex is the network of corporations which supply healthcare services and products for a profit. Mm. And Google, what is monopoly? According to Wikipedia, a monopoly exists when a specific person or enterprise is the only supplier of a particular commodity. Mm, I get you. And hey, Google, what is oligarchy? Hmm, stuck. Hey, Google, what is oligarchy? <laughs> ah, it's tired. Hey, Google. What is all? Hmm. Hey. Something went wrong. Try again in a few seconds. Okay. Hey Google, what is oligarchy? According to Wikipedia, oligarchy is a form of power structure in which power rests with a small number of people. Hmm. I think it's the CIA attacking me here. What do you think? Uh, fucking Google goes down, right? <laughs> Can you talk about monopoly and oligarchy and power? <laughs> the shit goes down, man. Let me get this out of the way. So, so, there's a couple of meanings for you, right? A couple of meanings. I'm going to keep reading today. Individuals do not live or work in isolation, but live in cooperation with, the, uh, with others and nature. Just like the wave, just like the surfers, just like the waves, right? It's, it's in, it, we're all in, in, in uh, w one thing borrows from the other, and we're all interdependent. I guess is the word, right? Interdependent. Everything that people and their nature produce is in some way a communal product. And everyone who contributes uh, to the production of a good is entitled to share in it. Right? Now, that's not, that's not unusual. That's the essence of our Constitution, where all men are created equal. There's, there's you know, right to, to uh, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, right? That's, that's all consistent with, with our Constitution. The Constitution and organizations of government, our, our Constitution, I'm, I'm going to just keep reading, our Constitution and organization of government is enduring. The legislative branch, the executive branch, judicial, right? It works, right? We have a system that works. Nobody's denying that our, our structure, our governmental structure uh, uh, works, doesn't work. Right? Nobody's arguing that. Uh, people like to throw up, you know, they're throwing um, these buzzwords, like capitalism, socialism, communism, right? And but it 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 defies every every political system in history is is different, right? Like for example, Chinese are using a form of communism, but that form of communism is not really you couldn't reproduce it because it's very it's very specific to China and Chinese culture that has evolved for thousands of years, right? So to, to and, and as well with, with the other ones, socialism, with capitalism, with various forms of democracy, right? These, these terms aren't consistent anymore with historical uh, meanings, right? That's what political reform is all about. That's why we have a system that works, the Constitution, right, where, where we can we can ratify the Constitution. We can make changes to it. It's a living, breathing instrument, right? We, have, we already have made amendments to it, but we can continue to do that. But why can't we make amendments now? Why can't we move towards a, a society that works for all the people? It's because of the, the extreme power of the money influence. You saw in the State of the Union, you saw... When you looked around the room, there was uh, there was nothing but money. Some of those people, the senators and congressmen, from from two or three million dollars for a congressman to to buy that person's seat, up into thirty, fifty million dollars to buy a senate seat. Right? See, that's why they're cheering when they say down with socialism, whatever that means. That means translated. That means your social programs and your the opportunity for. 99% of the people to compete in a in a free market is is uh, frowned upon, right? And they're cheering. Why? Because their donors are giving them a million dollars to, to cheer. See, they're cheering the capitalism of the oligarchy, right? Right? Which is not capitalism at all. It's oligarchy. It has exhausted, right? 
and you you take the hit for that right so you're seeing when you watch the state of the union you're seeing kind of the corruption at play because if if the congress and senate if congress only has maybe a a 12 or 15 percent approval rating in this country what does that tell you that 85 to 90 percent of the people know it's nonsense right and it doesn't affect them right so let's just read a little more so Again, we have a system that works. It's just that right now it's polluted by money, right? That I think we all agree with that, right? That, and there are ways to change those laws, right? We have laws on the books that prevent, uh, uh, you know, that that allow endless flows of money into politics. Citizens United, for one, right, to overthrow decisions like that, right? And to to make an amendment to the Constitution is not particularly hard. When you have uh, a widespread agreement, you need two thirds of House, two thirds of Senate, and ratification in the at the state level. So if everybody agrees on something, like get money out of politics, right? Cap the you know, ch ch the cor make the t corporate tax rate, cap corporate tax rate, right? <laughs> you can you can we can the point is without getting specific, we can do these things with a cooperative House and Senate, but we don't have that because we have a we have an oligarchy. We have the money instead of a constitution. We have money raining down on our judicial branch, on our legislative branch, which is what what we saw the other night, right? And and the um, well, you saw all of them. You saw judicial, you saw executive branch, and you saw uh, legislative branch all in one room, right? The the the, uh, the the Supreme Court. You saw the executive branch. You saw all of House and all of Senate. They're all in one room converging right that is the 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 three levers of power the separations of power right they're all in one room but it's deeply corrupted because they're not paying attention to the constitution anymore they pay attention to the money right because the money in the room is controlling the board right so okay so we're not talking about eliminating healthy competition and free markets we want that right the entre entrepreneurial spirit but from time to time, political reform is necessary right, to restore balance. Right? Ratification of the Constitution is necessary, right? where you make changes. Right? It doesn't like, for example, I'm saying tax the corporations at 80 percent. Yeah, maybe not forever. Maybe f for 10 years until it deflates. Maybe make individual tax zero and corporate tax 80 percent, and bring it bring it not exactly, but deflated and then when it seems that these people are getting too much advantage then you 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 adjust right it's okay to adjust things there's no absolutes the reason why you can't adjust anything is because of of conservative ideas where once somebody is making money on a in a certain direction you they hold so firmly and so oh no 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 you can't change why you can't change because it it jeopardizes your monopoly your 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 oligarchical plan to make millions and billions and trillions of dollars for yourself and not reciprocate a penny. Right? Political reform, that's all we're talking about. Right? It's possible if people agree, right? That's what these movements are about. Right? When capital, listen to this, when capitalism tops out, I wrote this by the way, <laughs> some of it, that when capitalism tops out, it leads to unfair and exploitative con concentrations of wealth and power in the hands of a relatively few who emerge victorious from free market competition. These people then use their wealth and power to reinforce their dominance in society. This is monopoly. This is oligarchy. This is, it's no longer capitalism. You understand? A capitalism is a free exchange of, of ideas, but once it's concentrated at the top, it's not only is it impossible to compete, these people are deliberately working against you to not make you able to compete. And they monopolize ideas. That's why music is bland and, and, and fashionable, looks the same, and, and everybody everybody has the same face in the in the corporately owned media. They all repeat the same thing, right? And people get all so worked up, oh I can't believe they fucking said that. Well, it's 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 understandable because they all have the same donors. Right? They're all taking money from the same place. Because such people are rich, they may choose. Because when people are rich, they choose where and how to live, 
and their choices in turn limit the options of the poor. As a result, terms such as individual freedom and equality of opportunity may be, may be meaningful to the oligarchs, but can only, but only ring hollow for working people. Right? It doesn't mean anything when you say freedom and equality. What? To, to, to work two and a half jobs for slave wages, to have $400 in the bank and, and live paycheck to paycheck and, and have no leisure time whatsoever? have to go out on food stamps half of the country is living in abject poverty that's what you, that's that's what 90 you know 90 percent of the country has to deal with and, and we're, we're we're sympathetic to a to a one percent ruling class and oligarchy it's almost ridiculous when you break it down like that all right so uh, as a result the terms such individual freedom and equality i'll read it again why not Fuck, I read it twice. Equality of opportunity may be meaningful for the oligarchs, but only rings hollow for working people who must do the oligarchs' bidding if they are to survive. Right? Slaves. It's slavery, right? True freedom and true equality require control of the resources that provide the basis for prosperity in the society. The condition for the free development of each is the free development of all. I borrowed that from somebody. You try to figure out who it is. Uh, so, so that's what I'm trying to say today, right? Is that, is that when we look out the window and we say, why is why is there such a mess? Why is this? Why are all these? Why are we having all these problems? Why don't the politicians represent the will of the people? And your answer lies in the money in politics, plain and simple, 100% unescapable. Every move that this country makes is in lockstep with. 10,000 publicly traded companies, a corrupt, fraudulent banking system, Fed Reserve, the, the, the monetary fucking this, and the, the, the World Bank, and all these, bullshit all these bullshit organizations that are designed to choke every last penny out of your damn pocket right? and enslave you so that the oligarchs can live high on a hog, so that they can go to their private schools and have their, you know, have their... Their, uh, their, their, uh, their gated communities. And the way to do that is the oligarchs just buy the politicians, Republican, Democrat, and they scream at each other about social issues. They, you know, let's wear white because we're fucking women and, and fuck you. And, and we're going to build a wall because the immigrants suck and fuck you. And, and, and did we go to the moon? Fuck you, Buzz. <laughs> I'm not there on that, on that uh, Buzz Aldrin. I did, I did watch that. And, and, uh, did we actually go to the moon? Well, we Na, uh, NASA claims, you know, the Apollo missions. We they claim twelve people went to the moon. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not there yet. You know, I don't I don't know about that. It does seem like we did it. You know, at some point. Right? Or was it just a scare that scared the shit out of our, scared the shit out of the Russians and the and the Chinese right? before we got to the moon before you did? See, we got fucking shit, man. We got some shit that you don't have, man. You better watch out. That's possible. It is possible. So, uh, so there you have it, you know, Brexit, um, MAGA, wear your yellow vest, man, the fucking yellow vest, that sums it all up, right, you know, watching, watching, we're going to watch countries continue to get knocked off like Venezuela, poor Venezuela, right, what the hell did they do to deserve that shit, absolutely nothing, right, it's like, because it's oligarchy run amok, right, we see it, we know what it's about, they're doing, they do it now out in the open, and, and we have an, an American president who says from the podium, we will not apologize for American aggression, American might, American interest. They call it interest now. Right? And it's not new. It's every, every, every um, president, every society has done it, done it uh, thus far. And to speak out against it is to be ostracized. We're seeing it you know, with, as we approach a new presidential election as if, as if the president switching out this president or keeping this president is going to make any difference whatsoever. It's not going to make any difference because the system is still the same. They still take money from the same people. Unless you break down the, the, the way people are paid and get these millionaires and billionaires out of our Congress and out of our Senate, nothing will change. Right? How, how is it that that Nancy Pelosi has is worth a uh, hundred million dollars, and 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 uh, Mitch McConnell is worth a hundred million dollars, or even somebody as simple as Elizabeth Warren is worth five million dollars. Where'd you get the money, Pocahontas? 
You know, where, where did you get $5 million? Who gave you $5 million when your salary is only, uh, you know, two and a quarter, two, two, 250000 a year, whatever, less? Right? Where do they get the money? They get the money from, from, from interest, from doing favors. That's the, the fundamental problem, right? And we could say, well, drain the swamp, get rid of, you know, the swamp. But again, we, time and time again, we replace the swamp and we get new swamp creatures. Look, look around Trump. He's got Goldman Sachs there. He's got he's got you know Elliot Abrams, the the CIA spook, you know Mike Pompeo, CIA spook. He's surrounded by spooks and 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 propagandists and bankers. Right? That's not change. That's not making America great again. That's that's just more of the same. Right? So when the when the movement from the bottom, that's where it really starts. That's what Yellow Vest is. We're seeing it take root in France, the French Revolution. French have a long history of revolution. But again, the past doesn't equal the future. It's that they're doing it now, and, and their eye is firmly on the ball, right? And, and throughout the whole effort, they're going to be labeled, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? And, but really what it is is to take out the oligarchy, to take back power and return it to the people. My name is Marcus Conti. Today we are all yellow vest.